if you're someone who struggles with making impulsive emotional shopping decisions, if you're someone who has a bad day, then immediately ends up at the mall or online making purchases, then this video is for you. You can heal your shopping addiction too. I did and so can you. Hello beautiful soul and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how I healed my shopping addiction. In today's day and age, everything is fast, quick, you want it yesterday, immediate gratification. So how did I heal my emotional shopping addiction? This was not easy. This came from a lifetime of covering up emotional abuse. Um, in my household. So what that means is when we were younger, if something was wrong, we'd go shopping. Have a bad day? Go shopping. Need to get out of the house because shit's a little crazy? Go shopping. That became something that was so comforting and so familiar to me growing up and I never thought once that it was an issue until I got older. And I started to realize that every time I felt some sort of emotion that was anything that made me feel uncomfortable, whether that was uneasiness, fear, or just a bad day, anything, anything, it would be an excuse to go shopping. So once I realized that I had an emotional shopping addiction, that every time I was triggered, or every time I felt an uncomfortable emotion, that that led me to running to the mall or making online purchases to make myself feel better, I finally realized like, hey, it's probably not healthy. It's probably not a healthy way to live your life, to go and make impulsive purchases just because you had a bad moment, a bad day. Like there has to be healthier ways to work through things. I'm someone who likes to do the extremes of things, which means that when I realized that I was emotionally addicted to shopping and it became a band-aid to make me feel better, I knew I had to cut that shit off cold turkey. So that is what I did. What that means is bare minimum, baby. You don't need that sweater that's on sale. You don't need those new boots that are in season. You don't need to go buy new earrings just to go with this one outfit, a new dress just to go out for this one night. You don't actually need those things. So did I go through major withdrawals of wanting to shop when things were weird? Yes, and this is how I moved through things. Say I had a bad day at work, and that bad day at work led me to have a bad drive on the way home, which led me to be frustrated about my bad day, my bad drive home, so then when I'm home, I'm frustrated and feeling like I need something to make me happy again. Instead of running to the mall or going online to shop, what I would do in the beginning was I would what you call like window shop or just online shop, where you're adding things to your bag, but you're not purchasing it. You're like energetically purchasing it, but you're not actually purchasing it. And for me, that really helped me. So I would go and I would add things to my bag that I thought that I needed, that I wanted to buy. And sometimes I swear I felt like I was online for like an hour or two. You know how you can just get lost in searching for your things and whatever. But during that time, it was kind of distracting me to start to think like, well, yeah, well, like, why do I want these pants? I already have a pair of leggings. Why do I want these leggings? Why, when I have a black leather jacket in my closet, do I have this black leather jacket in my cart? So it just helped me kind of bring things to the forefront and start to question and realize and understand like why did I feel like I needed these things to feel better? So after the first couple weeks of like those immediate impulsive urges that you'd want to do to go shopping, the online bag stuff helped for the first few weeks get that energy out of like, oh, see, we're doing it, but now we're not going to follow through. Then to dive deeper into the work, on the days when I felt like I wanted to go shopping or I wanted to buy something that I didn't need, I would just sit with it. I would start to question, why do I want it? If I get it, what will it make me feel? If I feel this, why am I feeling this from this? How long will that feeling last? You know, you start to deep dive and start to answer these questions for yourself and it starts to just kind of pull the truth out that you don't really need whatever you think that you need. It's an emotional addiction. You're literally addicted 
to covering up whatever uncomfortable feeling that you're feeling with this shopping. So I would journal about it and I would write things out and be like, I don't actually need this stuff, but I feel like I want this stuff because I'm used to it, right? You get your neuron pattern going where it's like, oh, you feel something, go shopping. Oh, you feel something weird, go shopping. So we have to rewrite that neuron pathway. And when we want something, because we have a bad feeling, we think, oh, okay, but we're not going to, we're gonna sit with this feeling instead. Oh, weird feeling, oh, but we're gonna sit with this feeling instead. And I started to dissect and sit with and get curious and wonder why I was feeling what I was feeling and why it made me want to go shopping. And so you do this enough times and you're gonna start to learn and understand your own patterns, how you work, how you were covering up stuff for yourself, and you're able to work through it. Now this took a good six months, I would say, um, to shift through these different phases of things. Like obviously in the beginning, it was very difficult. It was very difficult because you're trying to understand how when you did something so quick, as in swipe your card, buy a shirt, go to the mall, any purchase, any purchase, makeup, whatever, whatever made you feel good, that that is no longer there to be your crutch and that's doing the inner work yourself, that you now have to rely on yourself and how you feel and actually sitting with those uncomfortable feelings, right? After doing that for some months, I was able to kind of, it just, things get easier over time, just like with anything. It's never gonna be as hard as when you first start working out as if it's six months later, right? So in the beginning, it's gonna feel like uh, you're out of breath, you can't believe it, how are you gonna move through it? But you do it and you keep showing up and you keep going through it. So every time an urge would come up, sit with it, question it, wonder about it, get curious, ask the questions, right? And everything will get easier. And then I started to get towards the six months, I started to get more creative with things. As someone who constantly likes to redo my home and the home decor and switch up the vibe and I'm an Aquarius so I like to be funky with my clothing and switch things up, I had to get inventive. I had to get creative. So I started doing a lot of DIY projects. I started DIYing clothes. So say there's an old shirt that's like funk town and it needs a new life, snip, snip, cut, cut, so, so, do something new with it. Get creative upcycle some home decor, paint something new. Like there's so many things that you can do for cheap around the house that will still give you that new feeling that you may be needing without actually going out and impulsively spending just to cover up an emotional need. Those are some of the tips and tricks that I did that really helped me move through the emotional spending habit. So if you're wondering, when did I finally make purchases? When did I actually allow myself to buy things? Well, I will say, honestly, for two at least Two full years, I did no shopping, none. No new shoes, no new anything, nothing. I had more than enough that I needed. There was, I wasn't going to, like I said, I go full-fledged for things, so I needed to go balls to the wall and that meant no shopping for me. Like I needed to understand why I was feeling certain ways and learn to move through that within myself and not rely on something outside of myself. So no shopping for two years. And I ended up thriving from that. And honestly, the way that I shop now is so freaking different. It's coming from such a more healed place. It's coming from someone who knows needs from wants and knows wants from desires. And I just feel like it's really helped my money habits. It's really helped my minimalistic quality that I actually like. I like going into my closet and everything in there fits me. Everything in there is what I'm, you know, want to wear. It's to the point. It's it's perfect the way things are designed now. So basically, what I am saying to you is you too can heal your emotional shopping addiction. It's going to get uncomfortable. It's not going to be fun. It's so easy to just quick charge it and make yourself feel better. Cut it off. Cut that shit off. Get rid of it. Just cold turkey. Goodbye. You don't need to shop. You've got a roof over your head. You've got food in your belly. You've got hydrating, clean water. It's like you actually have everything that you need. Your ego is just telling you that you need other things instead to make you feel better. Let me know if you are someone who struggles with making emotional shopping purchases. You've ever suffered from a shopping addiction? And how did you heal it? Are you wanting to heal it? Is it even something that you're just maybe now recognizing within yourself? Let me know. 
I'm very curious. Thank you guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.